right, today I'm gonna walk you through using a compressor on a vocal track. This is a really common application for compression because vocals are very dynamic. In the beginning part of a song, you may have a vocal that sings really quiet, but then by the end of the song, they might be belting it out. They have a huge dynamic range, and this is why we use compression. If we didn't have compressors, we would be constantly having to turn the volume up and down throughout the whole song in order to make it fit in the mix. Thankfully, we do have compressors and they do all of this automatically, but we still have to kind of set the parameters on them to help them know exactly how to do that for the specific track that we're working on. So let me open up a project here and walk you through what this project or what this process would look like. All right, so I have here a compressor. We're just gonna flatten this out here, start over from scratch, and we're gonna listen to this vocal without the compression um, and see kind of what it sounds like, see what it needs. And I think what you'll find is that there's some really low parts and there's some really loud parts, and it's gonna be really difficult to fit this into a mix without some form of compression. So let's take a listen here. Mountains shake before you, the demons run and flee. At the mention of your name, King of Majesty, there is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am. Okay, so as you can hear, there's a lot of dynamic range in here. A lot of low stuff, a lot of really loud stuff. We need to kind of reduce that range a little bit so that it will actually fit in our mix. So the objective with compression in most vocal situations is we want it to sound smooth and really natural. We don't want it to be pumping and really obvious that there's compression happening. We want it to be really natural. Um, so when I open up this compressor, um, typically the first thing for a vocal that I'm looking for is I start setting some of these things at kind of general numbers um, and then we'll just kind of tweak them as we go along. So I usually start with the ratio. The ratio is the amount of um, compression that's happening. So for every, right now, if, if I set the ratio to about three to one, which is usually what I start at for a vocal, usually three or four to one, depending on how aggressive the vocal is. Um, what that's telling me is for every three dB that crosses the threshold, it's only going to let one out. So that ratio of compression is how this whole thing works. Okay. So we start with this ratio here. Um, typically I start with, um, usually a pretty fast attack and fast release. I'm gonna leave these alone right now and we're just gonna kinda of do this piece by piece so you can hear how this all comes together. So um, the ratio and the threshold then go hand in hand. Um, so as I pull this threshold down, we're gonna notice that it's doing more and more compression. I typically aim for about four to six dB of compression unless something is really, really wild and out of control and needs even more than that. Um, so I've found that 6 dB of gain reduction usually is a good, um, good starting point to get a really smooth natural result. So let's go ahead and uh, play this with the ratio set. We're going to pull the threshold down and get that um, 4 to 6 dB of gain reduction. And then we'll start to work with the attack and release and make that a really smooth experience. So let's listen real quick. Mountain shake before you. The demons run and flee At the mention of your name King of majesty There is no power in hell Or any who can stand Before the power and the presence Of the great I am The great I am The great I am Okay, so we've set the ratio, we've set the threshold, 
to the place where we've, we're getting a, a peak of 6.7 dB gain reduction. So that's a good spot right there. It sounds like it's a little bit more reduced under control. However, the attack and release is definitely not where it needs to be. And you can know that because you can hear the compression kind of working and then turning off and then working. And um, it just sounds really kind of push pull and very unnatural. So this is actually a very, a pretty slow attack and uh, a pretty slow release or medium, I guess. Um, and so we're gonna pull these down and make them a little bit faster. And what we'll find is that that transition time is a little bit faster and it sounds a little bit smoother. So let's try that. Mountains shake before you, the demons run and flee. There is no power in hell or any who can stand. Before the power and the presence of the great I am, 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 the great I am. Okay, so this sounds a lot better to me. We've made the attack and release a lot quicker, so the amount of time it takes to get to full compression is the attack. And so that transition period has been reduced to 2.4. Um, so now that's a lot quicker. And then release is 52 milliseconds. So typically I time the release um, to kind of go with the flow of the vocal. So you'll, if you watch the meter, you see as his vocal is dying off, the release is dying off at around the same rate. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. And then as I'm, um, I'm continuing to watch my compression here and right when they got into that next part of the song he jumped up to minus seven gain um, seven db of gain reduction so that's even further here so this is kind of a starting point for a compressor um, we've set the threshold ratio attack and release um, if we wanted to Actually, we can do this real quick. We'll kind of set a little bit of this, this gain back. What happens is with a compressor, a lot of times when we do that, it pulls a ton of the gain back and then it makes everything quieter. Um, and what we can use this gain function for is we can add some of that volume back, but it adds the compressed volume back instead of just the uncompressed stuff that we just got rid of. Um, so we can try that and we'll kind of want to, sometimes we want to just kind of level match it, help it, you know, if it hacked a ton of volume off of that, we want to kind of add that back. And so it sounds musical and natural again. So we can try that real quick. There is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am 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 Okay, so we just kind of level matched it a little bit with this gain here, help turn that compressed signal up, and that's that's really what we're going for. Um, this is a great starting point for a vocal, um, at least the one that I have here. Um, and what would happen in a mixing session is I would kind of set this, get it kind of where I want it, and then I probably move on to the next one. And if I needed to come back and tweak it some more, I can always do that. But at least for right now, this is a great starting place um, and I can move on to the next thing, tweak it later if I need to. All right, so hopefully that walkthrough was kind of helpful for you to show you how the compressor works and then how we can use it in a practical setting. Um, and again, you don't want to take these parameters and assume that all of this is going to work great for your vocal. It may be a little bit different, but this is a great starting place um, so that you can kind of just start there and then kind of adapt it to your specific 
situation. So um, if you're new to this channel, you're trying to learn all these different things for the first time, I actually have a guide that I think will really help you in this process. It's called the seven step mix. It's on my website, themixingprocess.com. And this guide will actually walk you through the seven steps that I take in every single mix. It'll work with things like compression and EQ and balancing levels and all these different things that we do as audio techs. Um, it'll give you a, just a good consistent um, concise method, systematic pattern to walk through your mixes and get great results from that. If that sounds like something that'd be helpful for you, you can download it completely for free on my website, themixingprocess.com. I think it'll help you out in this learning process. And as always, if you have any questions for me, you can type them in the comments below or you can actually contact me directly from my website. Um, I'd be happy to have a conversation with you and help walk you through any of these challenges that you might be having. But until then, go be great at what you do. I hope this was helpful for you. I will see you on the next one.